Have you ever picked up a pair of scissors and noticed something odd? Something you've probably seen a thousand times but never truly thought about? One handle is bigger than the other, not just slightly either. It's often noticeably larger, sometimes even shaped differently. It's one of those design quirks that feels completely natural in your hand until someone points it out. Then it's all you can think about. Why are scissors like that? Was it an aesthetic choice? A manufacturing shortcut? Or is there some hidden ergonomic science behind it? Today we're slicing through the mystery behind this peculiar design and uncovering why one hole on your scissors is always bigger than the other. Right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with a quick anatomy lesson. Scissors have two blades joined in the center by a pivot, and each blade ends in a loop or handle hole where you insert your fingers. At first glance, they seem symmetrical until you realize the loops aren't the same size. Usually one hole is larger and more oval shaped while the other is smaller and rounder. For most right-handed scissors, the larger loop is on the bottom, meant for your fingers and the smaller one on top for your thumb. So this isn't a random design, it's deliberate and purposeful, and surprisingly, it has everything to do with control, force, and comfort. When you use scissors, your thumb goes through the smaller loop and your fingers, often two or three, go into the larger one. Think about that for a second. Your thumb moves in a very different way than your fingers do. It has more range of motion, but it's also more delicate. Your fingers, on the other hand, have greater leverage and can apply much more force. The unequal handle sizes help balance this relationship. The larger loop allows multiple fingers to share the load, especially when you're cutting something tough like fabric or cardboard. Without that bigger space, the pressure would concentrate on just one finger which would not only hurt over time, but also reduce the effectiveness of your cut. This is especially important in tasks that require precision and endurance. Try using scissors with two equally small loops for an extended period. Your hand will cramp up before you get anything done. The different sizes allow your hand to work in a more natural and less fatiguing way, distributing stress more evenly between thumb and fingers. Interestingly, this design didn't appear in the earliest scissors. The first scissors, believed to have been developed around 3,000 years ago in ancient Mesopotamia and Egypt, were basically spring shears, two metal blades connected by a strip that bent in the middle. These early tools were symmetrical and used more like tongs than modern scissors. It wasn't until the Romans came along with the cross-blade pivot design around 100 AD that scissors began to resemble the ones we know today. Even then, the handles were usually symmetrical. The shift toward asymmetrical handles likely started during the Industrial Revolution, when mass production of scissors became more refined and manufacturers started paying closer attention to user comfort. That's when design moved from pure utility into the realm of ergonomics, though no one called it that yet. Scissors evolved to accommodate not just the function of cutting, but the form of the human hand. That's when the asymmetrical handle really began to shine. The handle design also influences how scissors behave during different tasks. When you're cutting something soft, like paper or string, you don't need much force. But when you're tackling tougher materials, plastic packaging, thick cardboard, or even fabric, the handle becomes your main source of leverage. The larger loop gives your fingers room to maneuver and apply extra force without slipping or cramping. Professional grade scissors, like sewing shears or kitchen scissors, exaggerate this even more. The finger loop is sometimes so large it can fit your whole hand, while the thumb hole remains snug. 
This allows for a stronger grip and better control during demanding work. Some scissors even incorporate rubberized or contoured loops to further improve comfort and grip, especially during repetitive use. The bigger handle isn't just bigger for comfort, it's designed to be functional. It accommodates the finger's strength, motion, and need for space, letting you cut more effectively and for longer periods without discomfort. The bigger loop on scissors is a perfect example of intuitive, human-centered design, something we often take for granted. Designers and manufacturers didn't just guess when making one hole bigger. They studied how hands work. They tested grip, angle, pressure, and movement. Over time, the scissors we use today emerge from centuries of refinement. And now, you can pick up a pair and cut with ease, rarely stopping to consider that one little design choice that makes all the difference. It's funny how much of good design hides in plain sight. The things that feel so simple, like the click of a seat belt or the shape of a door handle, often carry with them layers of thought, history, and adaptation. Scissors are no different. That big loop isn't an afterthought. It's a well-engineered solution that's been molded, quite literally, around the human hand. So next time you grab a pair of scissors, pause for a second. Look at those handles, not just as loops for your fingers, but as the result of centuries of fine tuning. That larger loop wasn't made just to be different, it was made to work with you, your grip, your strength, your movement. It's a quiet piece of design that turns something as simple as cutting paper into an intuitive act. You didn't need an instruction manual to know which fingers go where. The tool teaches you as you use it, and that's the mark of a well-thought-out invention. It's easy to overlook the brilliance in everyday objects, especially ones as ordinary as scissors. But once you start noticing these design choices, the way they account for comfort, efficiency, and even handedness, it opens your eyes to the hidden logic built into so much of the world around you. That one big handle isn't just a feature, it's a story in itself. A reminder that even the most mundane tools carry within them the weight of thoughtful craftsmanship and human experience. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.